This week on the Spotlight, Carson Fulmer is back up with the big club. He has some thoughts. We also talk to Robin Ventura. He's kind of in the hot seat in a way. Let's see what he has to say. Then we talk to the new catcher. For short, we'll call him Omar. And... Congratulations, Pat. 1,000 shows. That means you've been around a long time. I think I've seen most of them. Good luck, buddy, in the future. Bye. Check out my website, Benkowski.com, for my weekly article and up-to-the-minute trivia sites. From wherever Chicago sports teams are making news, it's the 29th year of the Perfect Pitch Auto Repair Sports Spotlight. They have tune-ups, transmissions, AC service, engine repair, tire repair, oil changes, and more, 108th in Kedzie. Lansing Floral Shop, open 8 a.m. daily. Custom silk flowers, Bridgewater candles, great flowers, 708-474-1212. A great floral shop, Lansing Floral. Sheffield's has my trivia game, Wednesday, August 10th, 7.30 p.m. in Dyer, Indiana. See ya. With a 30-year Southwest Side tradition, Huckfin is open 24 hours to serve you with great breakfasts like the Becky Thatcher, soups, great lunches, one-third pound burgers, clubs, and much more. Dinners from seafood to steaks to pasta, great donuts, and ice creams. With three locations at Archer and Damon, 67th and Pulaski, and 105th and Cicero, stop in today. You know Huck Finn is open. You've got to get to Dr. Sherman Clay, chiropractor. Gentle adjusting, most insurance accepted. Massage therapy, too. Walk-ins are welcome. Call 773-324-4325. That's HEAL. Dr. Sherman Clay. You've got to get to the Wise Owl at Van Buren and Racine. Pizzas, pork sliders, Cuban sandwiches, carrot soup, elote, burgers, taco salads, and more. Great cocktails and great bartenders. A tremendous array at the Wise Owl, Van Buren and Racine. See you there. A unique business to Chicagoland is Snappers. Seafood and Chicken at 115th and Western. They started the franchise in Florida. They have tilapia, perch, catfish, shrimp, conch from the Miami Connection, crab, Philly steak, grilled food, an incredible array, an amazing menu at Snappers Seafood and Chicken, 115th and Western. In the last two months of the season, a wide range of situations can occur late in games. Uh, the manager is pulling out every stop, might have some personnel changes for uh, pinch hitters, pinch runners, might result in uh, some guys who were used to being starting pitchers getting into unusual relief roles. And that could be the case for Carson Fulmer, uh, premier draft pick of the White Sox who uh, made a quick rise through the minors this year and is with the big club now. We talked to him at SoxFest. Didn't really expect to see him this year, but here he is. And so uh, he might be thrust into some unique situations. And he talks about uh, his first major league experience and his first major league out. And it was a big time one. And I share a similar story with him. Uh, we were just reminiscing that we hadn't seen each other since SoxFest when it was about 10 degrees. And now we got legitimate super uh, summer here, and uh, you're in the thick of a, of a divisional uh, uh, pennant race, and uh, just could talk about being uh, in the minors, and then suddenly you're here. Yeah, my first full season. Um, you know, I was given a great opportunity to start in in Birmingham, Alabama, with the Barons. Uh, you know, in Double A baseball, where you know you're going to face some good talent, you're going to be around some guys that had experience. Um, you know, definitely learned a lot. You know, I started off uh, pretty good, then I hit a rough spell, and then, you know, was able to learn from that and, you know, just handle adversities. And I think that's the biggest thing in, in the development process of minor league baseball is is being faced with adversity and learning from that. So when it happens again, especially at this, you know, at this level, 
uh, you can get rid of it quick and uh, without freaking out. Ab absolutely. And um, yeah, went went to the futures game. Uh, was told there that I was going to get called up to the big leagues, and uh, so my fiance and I drove there um, uh, to Arizona. And from Arizona, we met the team in Anaheim, and I've been with them ever since. But it's, uh, it's definitely been a whirlwind, like you said, and it's been a uh, experience I definitely will never forget. Well, tell me when you hit that first wall, what what was the lesson that you learned coming out of that? What what particular thing did you work on and, and correct? I mean, there's a few things. Uh, not trying to be perfect. Obviously, I'm a perfectionist, so I, I try to, to do that. But in this game, you know, sometimes doing less, you know, is beneficial. Um, and the second thing is, you know, you can't dwell on, on what's happened in the past. You know, obviously if you face adversity in an outing where, you know, you get hit around a lot, you don't have control or whatever it may be, um, you have to get rid of it quick because either you're going to start five days later or you're going to be in the bullpen um, and ready to go the next day. So in this game, it's going to happen. Failure is, is part of the game and you just have to learn from it and, and move on quick. What was a memorable uh, batter you got out? Somebody maybe in the minors who had some major league experience, or, is, or, or an early major league batter that you got out that you that made an impression on yourself? Yeah, my first hitter I ever faced was Pujols in Anaheim. Um, I watched him as a kid growing <laughs> up, and you know, in that situation, warming up in the bullpen, I totally forgot that I was going to face him, and. And once I got on the mound, I uh, oh my saw God. him. Yeah, saw him. You know, coming to the plate. But you know, it was it was a test right out of the gate. And you know, you have to trust your abilities to, to go after him. And um, it's you against the hitter. And in order for me to get to where I want to be in my career, um, I have to face those types of guys. And I felt that, you know, obviously, luckily, it was you know turned out in my favor. But. You know, you walk away from that bat and you still have a ton of respect for obviously what he does and, and the person who he is. It's, uh, it's definitely, you talk about an experience I'll never forget, that definitely was it. I don't want to make this about me, but I got to tell you, in my job, that happens too. And there was a guy, <laughs> I was maybe 22, I walk into the Boston Red Sox locker room and a guy whose poster was on my wall as a child. Carl Yastrzemski. Absolutely. And so here's Benkowski going to talk to Carl Yastrzemski. <laughs> and I said, you got a minute, Carl? And he says, after I finish my beer, I want to drink my beer. And I, and I think he's blowing me off, right? Exactly. So I went and kind of stood on the side. I hear the can crumple, tosses it in the garbage, goes like this, gives me like 10 electric <laughs> minutes about his career. <laughs> and I was like, wow, okay, I, I'm in this now. Of so course. I know the feeling. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's... Like you said, he, he's, a, he's a role model to a lot of, a lot of players. Um, obviously, I'm a pitcher, but it, as, even as a position player, he, the way he handles himself on the field and off the field and the respect that he has for you know, his teammates and the respect that we have as opponents, it's, you know, I, I want to face those guys. And you know, luckily, like I said, it's, you know, I'm, I'm glad I had success, but you, know, you just never know what, what's going to happen, and you got to keep the same approach. Yeah, especially when you're facing the future Hall of Famers. Now, we cut to the chase here. You're about 100 games into the season, and your work is cut out for you with some teams to pass uh, to get into the playoffs. Uh, what, what is the mood of this team, and, and how confident are you? I mean, this, this clubhouse is special. You have a, a bunch of mature guys, and you have guys that are willing to help us young players who have come into the organization um, bond. and. You know, me coming in and keeping my head down and, and really just, you know, doing, you know, or just following guys that have been in this clubhouse for such a long time. It's it's definitely beneficial and it's made me feel comfortable, but the mood's great. You know, I mean, it's, we're right where we want to be right now. Um, you know, we've, we're, we're down some games, but like you said, there's a lot of baseball left. And, you know, I feel like the mood in the clubhouse and, and the guys are, are moving in the right direction. And, you know, we definitely are, are building on some momentum now. And... Um, we'll definitely make a push. We definitely will. And, um, and like I said, I'm, I'm just happy to be a part of an organization like this. In the past, you've got to get to Lansing Floral Shop. Open at 8 a.m. daily. Besides a great array of live flowers, they have custom silks, Bridgewater candles. They want you to plan your parties early at a wide delivery area. They're located at 3420 Ridge Road in Lansing, or you can call 708-474-1212. 
Weddings, funerals, birthdays, anniversaries, and guys, try the No Reason Flower. Believe me, it works. Lansing Floral Shop. Give them a call, 708-474-1212. Kim G. Sherman, psychotherapist, Des Plaines Wellness Center. Therapy for individuals, couples, families. Call 847-962-4849. I've known Kim for over 20 years. She is a true professional, and she will help you. Give her a call. Family Dentist, Lawrence Furland, DDS, 109th and Kedzie, crowns, veneers, cleanings, improving your smile. They do a great job. Call 773-233-7044. Excellent work. Impeccable. Call the family dentist, 773-233-7044. They did a great job for me, and they'll do a great job for you. You've got to get to Shelton Fireworks, the world's largest warehouse, off Interstate 94, exit 22B in Porter, Indiana. Row after row of the best fireworks anywhere, from the little ones to the grand finales that'll end your show. Birthdays, anniversaries, graduations, in addition to the 4th of July, just get over there to Shelton Fireworks now. Then you can reload by the time summer comes. Shelton Fireworks, I-94, exit 22B in Portage. We're back in the spotlight, and it, it's a long marathon of a baseball season. And unfortunately, Alex Avila, who was hitting for a while, uh, has had some injuries. He's in a minor league rehab assignment. And so uh, the White Sox had to go to the minor leagues uh, to get a backup catcher for Diana Navarro. And uh, we talked to the young upstart, and he talks about getting the call up and about being on the major league roster. Uh, a little bit surprised, a little bit wide-eyed, but uh, very glad to be up here. So uh, as this hits the air, we're in the month of August, and uh, these are the, uh, the hot days of uh, divisional race, and uh, it must be a good feeling to be at the major leagues oh, yeah. fighting for a playoff position. Well, we're trying to do the best for, for make it, you know, like uh, for position, but we, we're fighting for it. Tell me about what you were doing in the minors and uh, when you got the call and, and, and getting up here. Well, I was in Charlotte in AAA and uh, we were playing uh, Red Sox and uh, I did pretty good that night. I was catching it and I went home I found out the uh, I think I heard, and then I was like, like uh, I, mean, I wasn't that sure it was coming, but I was like, that could be the chance to get it. Yeah. And so you're you're on a plane. Where did you go to? Uh, what do you remember that? Well, what city did you go to? Uh, no, I was in Charlotte, and then I, yeah, I, I then came straight to Chicago. Straight to Chicago. Yeah. Okay. And then all of a sudden you walk in, and uh, yeah. who familiar faces did you see? Well, to you, I was in spring training with all these guys, so I kind of knew everybody because I played with, a lot with them in the spring training, but it was like a good feeling to work, work in here and yeah. see everybody again. It, I, from what every, I talk to the younger players, they, they say that you, you can, they're e the uh, veterans are easy to talk to. It's not like they, they're with themselves and the younger players stay by themselves. Everybody's mixing and talking and helping each other. Yeah, especially because uh, they're really good guys and we're, we can talk to them a lot and they, they just try to help us a lot. That's a really good thing about this team and we can talk every time. Who are some of the guys that have helped you already? Navi, Avi, I mean almost everybody. Like we're one team and we stay, we try to stay together. When you were a young player growing up, tell us where you lived when you were maybe 10 years old and what major league players you liked. Uh, when I was young I was in Venezuela. And then uh, I really like uh, Jadier Molina and uh, Miguel Cabrera because he's from, he's from my city. And uh, every time my dad took me to the Winter Bowl games and he watched this guy, watched that guy, especially Victor Martinez because my dad teach me how to hit like kind of the same like this when I was young. And I uh, really watched those games. Yeah, well, those are great role models. Yeah. And now you're going to be facing those people. Yeah. Uh, what was it gonna? And you've already had this happen, where uh, you're you're calling the pitches maybe, uh, and uh, trying to get some of these guys out. Yeah, well, we had a plan to 
tried to get in that out, but I was really good feeling like I couldn't even believe it when I was catching and Miguel Cabrera was in the box and Victor Martinez, but it is what it is. We're playing in games now and we're trying to keep it professional. But at the, when they first come to it, so bad, you maybe say something about... Uh... No, I didn't. Well, oh, I, really? No, I was on lock, lock out to my pitches and tried to have my pitcher right there. Oh, you didn't even exchange uh, a Venezuelan greeting? <laughs> maybe down the road someday. Maybe. Well, that's pretty cool. I, yeah. I respect that because you, you didn't want to... Uh, you know, give them any advantage or anything, right? Right. right. No, that's cool. Now you're in this race. You have about 60 games to battle and uh, try to win every series. Uh, what are the things that you see in this club bus that make you think that you will be battling for this playoff spot in late September? We just gotta keep playing, keep uh, fighting for what we want, what we will keep going to do in the last three games. Like try to keep it. That's, that's what our goal, and that's what we need to. And now, as far as when you come into a game, you might might be a late inning replacement. You know, who knows what you'll be going to be pinch hit or something like this. Uh, how do you feel in these late inning situations? Try to be ready for whatever happens. Try to be locked up, locked up to get to the plate or get to back to the plate, call the pitches, but try to watch a game and uh, talk to my pitchers what they want, what they can do, and uh, have a little idea when I, when I'm there. Uh, when you have the meetings with Cooper and you go over the series, are you taking a lot of notes? You're making mental notes. You're writing it down. How how are you keeping track of everything? Uh, I ask for a lineup yeah. first, and then I'm, I'm going over each guy, and I try to keep a name on my head. And then during the game, we talk a little bit and kind of remind what we got. It's a, it's a way more even mental at this level yeah. than even the minor leagues. Right. Right. Yeah, it's a lot. What, is it how much too much information or can you use it all? No, I can use it all. It's like everything we got here is usable. Everything, like a video guy, everything we can use it and have a plan to when we go to the game. When, when you're handed the information at the beginning of a series, at the majors, what is the new thing that, that you did not get at the AAA, that new information uh, that, that you say, oh, this is helpful? Well, more like uh, numbers, more staff numbers. And uh, like uh, when we, when the the guy who's hitting have more numbers when when got a minutes got a position or where the the base is empty, that's kind of the information we don't have in minor leagues. Okay, so you're putting it all in there. <laughs> Even how about the count? Does it does it help you what pitch to throw on which count? Does it say in there? Well, no, not at all. We we are, we like we have like a plan. When we go, like, what's the, what's the pitch we can take it out, what's the pitch we we need to, you know, like, set up, something like that. And it depends on the pitcher's strength, right. too. Right. But you, you, you've got that. Yeah. Well, Pretty sure I got it. All right. Well, uh, good luck, and we'll be watching for you in these important situations, uh, putting the correct fingers down and all Thank this. Thank you. Thanks a lot. With a 30-year Southwest Side tradition, Huck Finn is open 24 hours to serve you with great breakfasts like the Becky Thatcher, soups, great lunches, one-third pound burgers, clubs, and much more. Dinners from seafood to steaks to pasta, great donuts, and ice creams. With three locations at Archer and Damon, 67th and Pulaski, and 105th and Cicero, stop in today. You know Huck Finn is open. Go play at Red Shoes Billiards, 12009 South Pulaski in Austin, featuring 16 Brunswick Gold Crown pool tables, drop fluorescent lighting fixtures, and a fabulous grade of cloth. Call 708-388-3700. And now video gaming is available at Red Shoes from open till close. And don't forget, the Illinois Lottery 2. That's Red Shoe Billiards, 12009 South Pulaski. You've got to get to the sock live Minkowski trivia alternate Thursdays at 8 p.m. 93rd and Roberts Road. Great game, great people. Check out the sock. I think you'll be glad you did when you go to my trivia game every other Thursday. 8 p.m. 93rd and Roberts Road. Perfect pitch auto repair at 108th and Kedzie. Thus tune-ups, transmission, AC service, engine repair, tire repair, oil changes, and emission system repair. They're open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., and they've done a great job for me. Perfect Pitch Auto Repair 
at 108th and Kedzie. You've got to get to Papa Joe's new location, 5900 West 111th Street. Italian beef, tetrazzini, great pizza, parmesan, ravioli, and more. All my classic choices. New location, and they can still deliver into the city. Get to Papa Joe's. We're back on the spotlight. It's time to talk to the manager. Some crazy things have happened with this ball club this year. Unfortunately, the two biggest news stories to go national about the White Sox were about whether a 14-year-old should be allowed in the clubhouse all the time. And as a result, his father retired. That was the spring training story. And now the crazy case of Chris Sale taking the scissors to the throwback jersey and chopping it up and getting a five-day suspension. These are the weird things Robin has to deal with, or not deal with, because in a way it seems like the front office handles it. But in any event, Robin's asked about that and more in this week's Let's Talk to Robin segment. So are you energized by these uh, super exciting wins? I, you know, guys have fun. I, I think, um, you know, for us winning games in the last at bat, everybody enjoys it. I mean, it, it's fun. It's not ideal, you know, I, I think, uh, especially for home games because, um, you know, you always got somebody up in the bullpen in case you don't score that run. But it's exciting. It's fun. Guys enjoy it. They, you know, have a celebration on the field. It's It's been fun. Robin, facing a potential Chapman now in the ninth may, may make it a little bit even more challenging. It now. is challenging. Yeah. It is challenging. We faced him when he was in New York. And, uh, you know, just the velocity and everything that comes with it is, uh, is, is a different, mm -hmm. you know, aspect to deal with. So um, it's a good piece for them. And now the media turns to the Chris Sale issue and Robin with his initial remarks. You know what? All that stuff is, uh, I, I'm going to leave it at that. You know, everything that goes on in there, I'm going to leave it in there. But um, I know he's coming back to pitch Thursday. And really, from what happened, um, I, I just think from the conduct, we, you know, I acted appropriately. I asked Robin if, in retrospect, there was anything he could have done differently in the handling of the sale incident to more or less prevent the blow up, to prevent it from getting to the point of the actual uniform cutting? Not necessarily, no. I mean, it, it, again, um, you know, everything that happened in there, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to keep it in there. But, um, you know, I, I think, you know, we had to act. It was, it was over the line. Robin, has he worked out on the side? I, mean, this would be a side I day believe day. he came early and, and worked out. So um, I, I think there were some guys here early, and, and uh, for him, he worked out and, and probably played long toss. He doesn't usually do a lot in between. When players don't understand technically what um, teams do as far as promotion nights and things like that, is that tougher for the staff and yourself to deal with because they, they, understand, they don't understand the magnitude of... Uh, the amounts of uh, time and effort money go into these type of events? Well, there, I mean, there's a lot of people that work hard on that stuff that are on the other side of the hall that, that you know, that's their job to, you know, either create a different uniform, create a night, a promotional night uh, to help get people in the stands and, and to make money. And that's uh, that's their job. And it's just not our team. It's, it's every team in baseball. Is it naive for uh, players not to understand that? Uh, sometimes they don't see it that way. I don't um, necessarily think it's naive, but it, I don't think they always see what other people are doing on the other side of the hall. That bullpen has been pretty worked since Saturday going into the weekend and then yesterday. How is it going forward in, in this series? Um, I think we'll get a couple guys back today. That, um, you know, probably Robbie and Jonesy we can use today. Uh, I, I know some other guys that, you know, that were used last night probably aren't available tonight. So we, we've been using those guys quite a bit lately, and you got to figure out a way to, you know, patch it together. With Chris, was it something that was bubbling up, you think? What's that? With Chris, was this something that was maybe bubbling up with his frustrations about other stuff, too? That I don't know. You'd have to ask him. Nothing you noticed? Nothing, yeah, nothing I noticed. Jose's kind of had an up and down year so far. He said he's been he was disappointed by the lack of consistency. What have you seen from him both on a personal level and then from his approach to the game? Well, I think personal level he he shows up every day, he's a great teammate, works hard, all that, but Abreu has shown frustration about his low power numbers and particularly the lack of home runs.
think that he puts on himself. And, you know, right now I think he's a lot better off um, mechanically, uh, mentally, all, all that stuff that goes into it. He, he's just a better hitter right now than he, you know, he had four every other guy does you go through periods where you don't swing it very well but right now I think he's in a pretty good spot Robin Ventura trying to salvage this season is just doing everything in his power and I asked him about is this team hot now because they're winning games late in this dramatic fashion been up and down. I mean, that's, uh, you know, it hasn't been real consistent. We've either been hot, cold, you know, we've been in between. Um, you know, now we're finding ways to win. I, I think, um, you know, they continue to show up and, and you know, fight hard and, and be prepared. All that stuff that goes with it you like to see. Um, they just come become a resilient group. What's the Um He's going to throw again in a couple of days, but he, you know, he said everything was fine the, the last time he threw. So, uh, you know, it, it's heading in the right direction. He hasn't, there hasn't been any uh, steps back. You've got to get to Jacks, 3325 Ridge Road in Lansing. Trivia every Tuesday at 7 p.m. A very intense competitive game. Any of half a dozen teams can win. My game show at Oliver's gets better and better. At 6100 West 159th Street in Oak Forest. Live trivia, alternate Thursdays at 7 p.m. Have great food, great drink, and great trivia at Oliver's. Perfect pitch auto repair at what 108th and Kedzie is great. Tune-ups, transmissions, AC service, engine repair, tire repair, oil changes. They're open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. They do a great job for me, and they'll do a great job for you. They're quick, and they don't charge an arm and a leg. Perfect pitch auto repair, 108th and Kedzie. Trivia will be at the Sock. Alternate Thursdays at 8 p.m. 93rd and Roberts Road, great food, great drink, great people. Everything great. You've got to get the Del Sur Mexican restaurant open for lunch and dinner daily. Shrimp, tilapia, salmon, steak, chicken dishes, you name it. It's all there at 46th and Halsted. Great stuff at Del Sur Mexican restaurant. Reggie's is a great place with tons of music, interesting people and staff, great food and drink at 21st and State. And amongst the cool things they have, Benkowski Trivia. All shows are now Monday at 6 p.m. Reggie's, 21st and State, a fun place. We close out by informing you about Chris Sale, Chicago White Sox pitcher, five-game suspension for cutting up uniforms, the throwbacks that he didn't want to wear last Saturday. You can't do this stuff. That's how you get in trouble. We'll see you next week. This week's show has been brought to you by the Perfect Pitch Auto Repair Shop. They do it all at 108th and Kedzie. Huck Finn, a great wide-ranging menu, along with donuts and ice cream. Open 24 hours at Archer and Damon, 67th and Pulaski, and 105th and Cicero. In print graphics, leaders in booklet, perfect bound, saddle stitch. Very competitive pricing. Call 708-396-1010.